refer to a single cell battery as a, as a battery. A type of battery that uses a, re a re uh, refreshable electrolyte and uh, that can be recha recharged is called a fuel cell. Uh, fuel cells do not consume the metal plates. They use uh, metals like platinum, which are not consumed in the reactions. The fuel cells can run on things like hydrogen, alcohol, and other uh, fuels, even gasoline. So you can put a fuel into these batteries and they produce an electric current. They're rather expensive though because many of them use things like platinum electrolodes and platinum is even more expensive than gold so that makes fuel cells a rather expensive option for many things but there are some new technologies that have gotten away from those expensive metals and so we may see fuel cells available to power things like laptop computers and cars and other things. Fuel cells have been used in spacecraft as a source of power. Here we see a fuel cell from the Apollo spacecraft that went to the moon. And uh, in this case, they had lots of money to spend, millions of dollars, and so fuel cells were a very good option because they had literally tons of hydrogen and oxygen gas on the rocket. That was the rocket fuel, and they could use that, that, to, that to power the fuel cell. And uh, a nice thing about the fuel cell was that uh, it also makes water, fresh water for you, because when it combines the hydrogen and oxygen together, you get water, which... Uh, the astronauts could uh, drink. A fuel cell would be a very nice thing for a home a power system. You could use solar cells to uh, produce electricity which then could be used to power an electrolyzer. An electrolyzer is a thing that takes water and converts it into hydrogen and oxygen. The hyd oxygen can be just released into the air but the hydrogen could be saved and stored in a hydrogen tank and then the hydrogen can, can be used for fuel to a fuel for a fuel cell for use uh, at night or the hydrogen can be used for cooking and heating batteries uh, can be connected in a number of different ways I want to talk about the ways that you connect batteries to get different voltages and currents here we see a, a battery connected in s two batteries that are six volts connected in series that gives a higher voltage and on the bottom we see four one and a half volt batteries connected in series giving six volts. Notice that the batteries when they're connected in series what we call aiding or uh, as, oppo as opposed to be connected from in such a way that they fight each other. The When they're connected in series we get an increase in voltage when we connect from plus to minus. Here you see two batteries connected in parallel now these batteries are connected in such a way that the pluses and minuses are connected together which does not give us an increase in voltage but it does give us an increase in current or current capacity. So we have two 6 volts connected in parallel and they are connected such that we get just 6 volts. The four 1.5 volts still give out 1.5 volts but they give us a greater current capacity. If you combine series and parallel connections, you can get both a higher voltage and a higher current. So here we have four 6 volts connected together, two 6 volts in series in two banks, and those two banks are then connected in parallel to give us 12, a greater current capacity at 12 volts. You can combine small cells, such as 1.5 volt cells. These AA batteries are connected both in series and parallel, so we get two banks each having four batteries two one and a half four one and a half volt batteries connected in series giving us six volts and those two banks then connected in parallel giving us greater current capacity here we have some lead acid batteries connected in parallel for greater current capacity such as might be found on a part on a forklift a golf cart or an electric car here we see some 12 volt batteries lead acid batteries connected in series and parallel. We have two banks of batteries in this picture. There's four batteries, each 12 volts connected in series from plus to minus giving us a 48 volt bank and the two 48 volt banks are then connected in parallel for greater current capacity. That's the kind of thing they do in car, electric cars. They will use uh, several batteries connected in both series and parallel. Here's an electric car 
and uh, it has some extra batteries in a little trailer going behind it. Interesting thing about electric cars is that while they're applying the brakes, what they can do is they can use the, instead of using the brakes though, they can use the motor to provide a uh, friction. Actually what the motor does is it uses the energy from the wheels to generate electric current. That slows the car down, but it, in the process that energy is converted back into electricity and stored in the battery. So this car that looks like it's going down the Tihon Pass from uh, towards Bakersfield from uh, the other side of the mountains. And it, that's a long downhill coast there, so it could be using that energy instead of just wasting it in by heating up some brakes. It can be storing that energy in the batteries for use later. Even racing cars can be made with electric motors. Electric motors have uh, large amounts of power for their size. In fact, they have greater energy uh, power output for their size than, than gasoline or diesel engines. But uh, the, they do require a power source, and it's the power source that weighs more than the motors. So electric cars can perform very well if they have a sufficiently powerful battery. And new, p new batteries are what, are what is needed for practical electric cars.